What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up RetroArch on iOS, and I will be using a 10th generation iPad for this setup. I will also show you how to import a PS1 BIOS to RetroArch for PS1 emulation, as well as show you how to extract your ROMs right on your iPad or iPhone without using a computer. And no, I cannot tell you where to get a working BIOS file, nor can I tell you where to get ROMs. But they are not that hard to find, just do a Google search and I'm pretty sure you will find what you're looking for. Or you can check out my Patreon page, link in the description below, and I will have some videos there that can help you with those two things. Okay, let's go ahead and open the App Store and go ahead and search for RetroArch. This is what the app will look like. Also in the App Store, you want to search for this app called Unzip. We will use this to extract our ROMs and PS1 BIOS. So here on my home screen, I have Unzip, RetroArch, and I have moved the files folder to my home screen. And we're gonna go ahead and open that files folder. So if you look to the left, you will see locations and I am currently on my iPad. Now I have created two folders in here, a PS1 BIOS folder and a folder called ROMs. Inside of that PS1 BIOS folder, I have a BIOS that needs to be extracted. Now some files you can extract without using the Unzip app. And in the case of this BIOS, we do not need to move this file over to the Unzip app. We can extract this file by simply tapping on it. And just like that, we have now extracted our file. Now we no longer need the zip file, so let's go ahead and hold on that, and then come down to delete. And we are good here, let's go back. Now let's go over to that ROMs folder. So I have created four separate folders in here, one for Game Boy Advance ROMs, N64 ROMs, PS1 ROMs, and Super Nintendo ROMs. And I have three ROMs inside of each folder. Now, just to show you guys how to use the Unzip app to extract your ROMs inside of the PS1 folder, I have left one game unextracted. That's the Crash Bandicoot ROM. And inside the Super Nintendo folder, I have Final Fight 3 that needs to be extracted. So let's go back to our home screen and let's go over to the Unzip app. Now, all the way at the bottom, you will see a plus icon. Go ahead and tap on that. Then select files. To the left, you will see locations. I'm gonna tap on on my iPad. Go to my ROMs folder. I'm going to that PS1 folder and I'm gonna select Crash Bandicoot and then hit open in the top right. Go back down to the plus icon, files, on my iPad, ROMs folder, and this time we're going over to that Super Nintendo folder and we're gonna select Final Fight 3 and open. Okay, so I have both of my games that need to be extracted in Unzip. Now to extract these files, all we have to do is tap on them. So let's do Final Fight 3 and then hit extract and you may see an ad. And then we're gonna do the same thing for Crash Bandicoot. Tap on it and extract. Now both of my games have been extracted, I can go ahead and delete the zip files. Just press and hold on them, and then go over to delete. Okay. Now let's go back home, go back over to the files folder. Now to locate those files we just extracted, we're gonna go over to the unzip folder, then my folder, and here's our two extracted games. Now, when you use unzip to extract your ROMs, it will extract your ROMs into a folder, as you're seeing here. So if we tap on that Final Fight 3 folder, you will see the file that you really need, which is right here. So this is the only file we're gonna move over to that folder I created. So we're gonna press and hold on it. We're gonna come down to Move, under Locations on my iPad, Go to our ROMs folder, SNES, and we're gonna move it here. Let's go back. Now we can go ahead and delete this Final Fight folder. Now your PlayStation games, you can actually leave inside of the folder 
because RetroArch will load the game within this folder. And inside of this folder, you will see another folder and then you will see your .q and .bin file. So let's go ahead and move this whole folder over, press and hold on it, move on my iPad, ROMs, PS1, and move. Now let's go back to on my iPad, back into that ROMs folder, PS1. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete that Crash Bandicoot zip file. And our PS1 folder is good to go. Over to SNES. And we're gonna do the same thing here, delete that Final Fight 3 zip file. Now I know that seems like a lot of work to get your ROM set up on your iPad or iPhone, and I'm not gonna lie, it is. But if you're someone that has been collecting ROMs for a while and you have a nice collection on your computer, store it on a hard drive or SSD, then it will be a lot easier and quicker just to connect your iPad or iPhone to your computer and transfer those files over. But I wanted to go through this process for those of you who don't have a computer and just have your iPad or iPhone so you guys aren't lost. Okay, let's go back to the home screen. Now let's go ahead and open the RetroArch app for the first time. And it will start extracting your assets. Wait till it's finished. And once it is done, we can go ahead and exit RetroArch. Now let's go back over to that files folder. And this time when you open that folder, you will see a new folder here that says RetroArch. So now what we're gonna do is move our PS1 BIOS file into RetroArch. So let's open that BIOS folder, go ahead and select the BIOS file, press and hold, then go down to move, under locations on my iPad, select that RetroArch folder, RetroArch folder again, and we're gonna look for the system folder, which will be all the way at the bottom, right here. And then we're gonna come up here to move. And inside of that system folder is where you wanna place any BIOS for any system that you have. Now let's go back over to on my iPad. And now we're gonna move our ROMs into RetroArch. And we're just gonna move the entire folder. So I'm gonna press and hold on the folder ROMs, go down to move, on my iPad, back into that RetroArch folder, RetroArch again, and we're just gonna drop the folder in here. So hit move. And we are good. All of our games are in RetroArch as well as our PS1 BIOS. Now let's go back home and let's reopen RetroArch. And over to the right, you will see these three little lines. Go ahead and tap on that. Select import content, scan directory, documents, and now we're gonna locate that folder we moved into RetroArch that contains our ROMs, that is called ROMs, which is right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tap scan this directory and when I do so, RetroArch is gonna scan all four of these folders inside of that folder and upload my games into RetroArch. Scan this directory. And as you see, my games are loading in right here at the bottom. Now back over to the right, let's tap on the three little lines again. This takes us back to the playlist menu. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we will see our Game Boy Advance, N64, Super Nintendo, and PlayStation icons. Now if I select one of these, I'll do Game Boy Advance. We have our three games in here with box art. Let's check N64, Super Nintendo, and PlayStation. Now at this point, we can simply load up a game. So let's do Crash Bandicoot and run. Now every time you select a game for a new system, it will ask you what core do you prefer to use. Now if you're wondering what is a core, well a core is basically an emulator built into RetroArch and RetroArch has multiple cores for different systems. Now for PlayStation, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and the core I prefer to use is the PCSX rearmed core. So I'm gonna tap that 
and that core is now set. So every time I try to load up a PS1 game, it will automatically use that core. And now if I hit run, I will load into the game. Now I'm back on the playlist menu and I'm gonna go ahead and set a core for my Game Boy Advance N64 and Super Nintendo. So let's go into Game Boy Advance, select the game, run, and the core I use for Game Boy Advance is GPSP, core set, N64, And in the case of N64, we only have one core available, which is Moopin64+, Plus, which is a great core anyways. And last, Super Nintendo. And for Super Nintendo, I'm gonna do SNES 9X. Now let's come back over here to the right and click on the home button. Select online updater. Scroll to the bottom, and we're gonna go ahead and update all of these. We can start with the core info files. Just tap on them and they will update. Assets. Controller profiles. Cheats. Databases. Overlays and slang shaders. Now let's go back. So now we basically have everything set up and ready to go. So the last thing I'm gonna do is change the way RetroArch's interface looks. We're gonna make this interface look a lot better. So let's come over here to the right and click on the gear icon, user interface, appearance, come down to color theme, so right now we are using ozone dark, which I actually prefer, but if you want to change the way this interface looks, then you can select one of these. I just selected green. This is what it looks like. This is dark blue, cutie blue. It's up to you. You can go through and play with that if you would like, but I'm going to show you what I prefer and that's to change the entire interface. So let's go back over to the right and click on settings. Scroll down to drivers, select menu, and the one I prefer to use is XMB. So we're gonna go ahead and select XMB. Now in order for this to take effect, we're gonna have to restart RetroArch. So go ahead and swipe up from the bottom of your screen. Then swipe up on RetroArch to close it. And now let's go ahead and reopen RetroArch. And as you see, we now have this beautiful blue interface that looks a lot better than the last one. And we can also use a controller if you have one connected to your iPad or iPhone. In my case, I am using an Xbox Series controller. I have also tested a PS5 controller. So if we scroll all the way over here to the end, you will see our games and they have box art. And from here, you can simply go ahead and select the game and run. And that game will start up. Now, I am using a controller, but as you see, I still have on-screen touch controls. So to get to your menu from here, over here, you wanna click on the retro arch icon. We're gonna go down to on-screen overlay. We're gonna turn off display overlay. Let's go back. Resume. And as you see, we now don't have the on-screen touch controls. Now, if I ever wanna get back to that menu, then I'll just hit my Xbox home button and it takes me right back into the menu. And on PS5, it will be your PlayStation home button. Now, if you wanna use your controller and still have on-screen touch controls, then you can hit this button right here to get rid of your on-screen touch controls when you want. And then you can hit it again and it will bring your on-screen touch controls back. Now, before I go, I'm gonna go ahead and load up a PlayStation game just so you know that we have a working BIOS and that that BIOS was placed in the right place.
Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.